In the beginning of the film, a man named Paul wakes up buried alive in an old coffin. At this point, he has no idea what's going on, why he's there, and who put him in there. Buried in the coffin with him is a lighter and a cell phone. With his hands tied up, he finds a nail on the coffin and rips off the rope. Now that his hands are free, he's able to move around a little bit more. But with the lack of oxygen, he has just minutes to escape. While trying to push his way out of the coffin, he hears a phone vibrating near his feet. He quickly calls 911. The only problem is that he has no idea where he is and his phone has crappy reception, making it harder to communicate with the 911 dispatcher. Paul explains to the dispatcher that he's an American truck driver working in Iraq. The dispatcher then states she's not sure how he's calling her since there are 911 emergency located in the U.S. Paul then gets frustrated and hangs up on the dispatcher. He then calls his wife. Unfortunately, she doesn't answer. He leaves a message telling her about the situation he's in. After that, he calls the FBI, explaining that he's buried in the desert and that some people started shooting the other drivers and then he blacked out. Unfortunately, that phone call gets cut short because of the awful reception. Paul then finds a number in his call history and gives it a call. He finds out that the man he's speaking to is one of the kidnappers and demands $5 million or he'll die in the coffin. So Paul has until 9 p.m. to get $5 million. Growing more tired and weak, he contacts the U.S. government to get $5 million. The lady on the other line then gives Paul a number to contact Dan, the commander of the hostage working group in Iraq. The lady transfers him to Dan Brenner. The commander explains that they are working on rescuing Paul, which gives Paul a huge sigh of relief. Dan explains to Paul that since he has a phone signal, he's probably only a few feet underground. Later on, the terrorist calls Paul, telling him he would reduce the pay to $1 million, but he needs to make a ransom video. Kidnapper tells Paul to grab the bag by his foot, then he hangs up on him. Luckily, there's enough space in the coffin for him to grab it. In the bag, he discovers two glow sticks, a flashlight, a knife, and a note. But since the note is hard to read, you can go ahead and pause the video and see if you can read it. But anyways, Paul and Dan get back on the phone, and Dan explains that they can't pay the terrorists, but they're doing their best to locate and rescue him. Losing hope and trust, Paul asks Dan about how many hostages they have rescued before. Dan states that they once rescued an American named Mark White. This gives Paul a sense of hope that he'll be rescued too. Dan tells Paul to conserve his battery and to calm down since he's running low on oxygen. The terrorist then calls Paul back demanding the ransom video. The terrorist then sends a photo to Paul of his employee Pamela tied up. Realizing that the threats are real, Paul reads the note while recording himself and sends it. At this point, Paul is frantic and slowly losing oxygen. With the sound effects and deep breathing, it truly makes you feel like you're in the coffin with him. Anyways, things start to get pretty crazy when he discovers a huge snake near his feet. At this point, I would probably be shitting my pants, but anyways, Paul thought it would be smart to ignite the snake, but that just pissed the snake off more. Luckily, the snake crawled into a crack in the coffin, but the fire is quickly spreading throughout. Paul was able to stop the flames with the dirt in the coffin. After that madness is all over, he gets another video from the terrorist. This graphic video shows the man shooting Paul's friend in the head. Paul slowly starts to lose it, giving up hope that he'll get rescued. Later, he calls Dan, and Dan says they are getting close. All of a sudden, he hears a loud explosion, and sand starts to fill the coffin. As the sand is slowly filling the coffin, he gets a phone call from his employer. He's told that he was terminated from his job earlier that morning because he had a romantic relationship with his employee, Pamela, which is the girl who was shot earlier. The man proceeds to state that Paul was terminated before his abduction, so the company isn't responsible for any injury or consequences from this incident. At this point, the coffin breaks even more, causing more sand to spill into the coffin. Paul now just has minutes to live. So, Dan calls Paul, saying that they found out his location and they're just three minutes away. His wife, Linda, finally calls him back the last minute. Paul promises Linda that he's coming home. Dan then calls him back, saying that they're there and opening up the coffin. Dan's last words, unfortunately, were, I'm so sorry, Paul. It's Mark White. He brought us to Mark White. Then the coffin fills up, and Paul, unfortunately, passes away. You might be confused and wondering, well, Dan said that they found Mark White alive a while back. So how did this happen? Well, Dan lied about finding Mark. They never found Mark until that very moment, and unfortunately, he was dead. Dan lied about Mark just to give Paul hope that he would be rescued. But anyways, comment down below what you thought about this movie recap. 
I thought it was a really good movie, even though it was pretty much just one setting and only one character. We never saw any other characters, really. But I thought it was a pretty intense movie for just being shot in a coffin. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video.